Hello, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. And as you see, man, and maybe you can't tell, we've got a little bit different setup. We are actually, and we're, we're using our, our good camera again, but we are actually streaming through a different software. And I'm kind of curious as to you, can you tell? Can you see what's going on? Can you see any difference? Because, I mean, we've got, cool little things that we can do now and play with. And don't get me wrong, not a lot, but man, we're working on it. We are working on trying to get better. And we do this because, so we got Mark Brothers. How are you? Good to see you in here. And William Rose, Rosebrock is in here. That is fantastic. So, and of course, William helps me put all this together, uh, my, my digital overlord. And i tell you what, he has really done good in helping me get things set up, get things implemented, and making it all happen. So, you know, it's great to see. Got Julie Wakefield looking good. Thank you very much. I like that. I don't get to hear that very often, so kind of interesting. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, Will, can you hear me? And the reason I ask is I've got red X's down here on my, my bar, so I don't know that I have audio. Yes, we can. Okay, good. So, hey, Will, if you get a minute, come here and look at this because I've got red X's down here on my thing, and it may not be any big deal. I just, you know me, I want to know what's going on. Uh, Victor Jimenez, fantastic. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, glad you can hear me, and it Will says loud and clear. So, you know, the neat thing is we constantly want to get better. And see, I've got a couple of red X's right here. And, and it may not be any big deal. I mean, I don't want to mess anything up, but... Aha, see, there we go. See, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's not the first time I've been told that, but I can live with it. Uh, 915 Richie Plummer, how we doing from El Paso? Man, that is good. I'm going to turn my screen over a little bit. 915. Uh, Jordan Kenny, any Irish in you? Probably so. Uh, probably so. Victor Jimenez, you were running a sanitary system today, all six inch cast iron. Good for you. Uh, I tell you what, it's a uh, six inch cast iron's fun. That's when it starts getting where, man, you got to manhandle it. Uh, and I know that because I've put some in a lot of it. Actually, I've gone bigger than that. I used to do got 10 and 12 inch storm sewers. And I tell you what, that's, man, it's, it's a job, uh, but it's fun. I love it. Uh, Danford University, Roger, isn't crazy how advanced we are in technology and are going to get it in the future. Man, I tell you what, if you'd have told me, let's just go back five years ago. Um, if you'd have told me back then, and, and, and this is a little bit before I opened my company, if you'd have told me then that an iPad or a computer, what was going to be something that I carried with me all the time, I'd have told you, number one, you're crazy. But the other one is, Mike, you're not late, brother. You are good. Uh, but, but the other thing is, if you'd have told me I'd be standing in front of a camera talking to people about plumbing because I wanted to, I, I just said, no way. And I, I got to be a plumber. I got I to work. I got to make money. And, you know, the, the neat thing about it is, number one, I love what we do. I love plumbing. Uh, you were running sanitary system earlier from about 9 to 12, 12 30 this morning. I was under a house doing a water line repair. We had tunneled eight feet under. There were two three quarter inch lines going through a concrete beam. And, you know, man, if you're a plumber, what, whatever area you work in, if you do a rough, do you sleeve your copper? Do you sleeve it where it goes in the beam? Do you sleeve it where it goes through a beam? Do you sleeve it where it comes up through the floor? And if so, what kind of sleeve? And I'm just curious. I don't do a lot of rough ends. I, for the last five years, it's all been residential service. So it's all repair work. But, you know, my, my thing is, man, I started roughing in apartment buildings, God, 40 years ago, 38, 35, somewhere around in there. And, I mean, I remember sleeving the copper from end to end and you know anytime that we we couldn't sleeve it because it wasn't there we'd go ahead and put the copper in but then after they dug the beams we would come back dig it out 
sleeve it, cut it, split it, wrap it, tape it, the whole nine yards and do all that. And I'm telling you, I've made a couple of repairs here lately that had no sleeving at all. So, so my question is, when, when you put in copper, if you do, uh, because, man, man, I just, I hate it when people don't do things right. It's the customer now is having to pay for the, the job that the plumber did before. And, I, man, I just think, look, man, if we're going to do a job, let's do it right. Uh, so let me see. Uh, got Mike Hadfield. No, brother, you're a good. Victor Jimenez, do I see construction still blooming, still booming in 2020 in the future? Guys, I think construction's here, and I think it's going to continue booming, and I think it's going to continue a lot longer than that. And and the reason that I say that, Victor, is think about it. We have been pushing going to college for so many years. We have been pushing it and pushing it until every kid these days these days feels like they have to go to college because their parents have told them, either you go to college or you're not going to amount to anything. And my thought process behind that is, man, that's a, that's a sad way to raise your kids because, you know, I understand that, you know, if you're going to be a doctor or lawyer, you know, you need to go to college. But there's a lot of jobs in this world you can get without college. And, you know, you can own your own business in, in the trades and you don't have to go to college to learn to do that. And, and I know because I are one of those uneducated plumbers. Uh, I went to high school. I, I had a very high IQ. I did okay in high school, but it was because that's all I tried to do. I, I really wish now I'd have tried to do better just to see if that would have motivated me to do something else. But, you know, the, the, the fact is I love being a plumber. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I love the fact that I can walk in you know, th th this job that we're on, I can walk in and look at what another plumber did. And I say, man, look, he made a mistake here. Now, I I'm not talking bad about him. I'm not downplaying him, not anything at all like that. But I look at a job like that and I think, you know what? If this plumber would have done things right 28, 30 years ago when this house was built, these people wouldn't be having these problems right now. And it's 35 years ago. So it was the mid-80s. So these people wouldn't be having these problems right now, or I don't think that they would. So, you know, my thing is, guys, look, what can we do to do things better? And, and to me, look, if you know it's supposed to be sleeved, do it and do it right. And you know what? Maybe they didn't know. Uh, luckily for me, I think I worked for some of the best plumbers that I could have ever imagined working with. And that, that was a big deal because I got an education that I don't know that a lot of plumbers got. And, and I'm so grateful that I did. Uh, anyway, th this is Dustin DeWeese. How are you, brother? It is so good to see you in here. Uh, man, I hope I didn't mess anything up right there. I just pressed something, and man, oh well. It locked up on me. So let me see what I can do. Ah, there we go. So, Dustin, it's good to see you in here. Uh, actually going to get to see Dustin here in a little while and go out and talk to him and visit. Uh and I, I love the fact that I think the position that I'm in and, and help get myself in, I get to talk to some of the smartest and coolest plumbers I've ever met. And I have people reach out to me from across the country, actually from around the world, wanting to get in the trades and do different things. So, you know, I just, I am so blessed to be in the position I'm in and, and I love it. We actually got, just got through shooting a video probably about 25, 30 minutes ago about KBiz. Uh, if y'all have ever been to KBiz or uh, the IBS, the International Building Show, anything like that, do me a favor and let me know in here. Do you go to any plumbing trade shows? Because I've got to go to KBiz twice now. Uh, got to speak at it once. Uh, and one time got to go out and tour a bunch of high school students and talk to them about getting into the trades, why they would want to get in the trades. And what is the difference in the different trades? Why to get in them and why to do those things that, that we want to do. Why learn to be better? And, you know, I told them one thing that I talk about all the time is, look, every morning, if you want to be better in this trade, get up and for 30 minutes to an hour, study this trade and put yourself ahead. Learn new tools, new technology, new equipment. What is out there that can make your job better? What is out there that can help you be a better plumber? Because, 
like I said, I get to talk to some amazing people across the United States. And when I find out what they're doing, I'm like, wait, why aren't we doing that here? Why aren't we doing something similar to that here? Or what can we do that's even better than that? And one of my first coaches was Michael Gerber. A lot of y'all know that. The neat thing is when I walked away from Michael Gerber, he said, look, look at your industry and look at it closely and say, look, I know this could never be done, but if we could do this, this would change the world. And I can't tell you how many times I ask myself that every day because it leads to some, some thoughts that make me think, you know what, maybe we could do it this way, or maybe we could do this. What kind of change can we make to make the world a better place? So I'm going to make sure I get these right here. And let me see, scroll back up because I got bounced around here. Jordan Kenny. Wait, hold on. Huh? Let me roll up a little further. Sorry about that. I missed it. Mike Hatfield, busy, busy Mondays. I get it. Uh, Victor Jimenez, do you see construction booming all over it? Victor Jimenez, is it possible to do my whole career in new construction or eventually I will have to do service? And Victor, I, I know a lot of people that are in new construction their entire life. I know a lot of people that are in construction their entire life. Man, it's what you want to do. The good thing is you control your future. You control your life. Nobody else. And you can decide what you want to do to get better, what you want to do to grow, what you want to do. What do you want to do for you? Because really, brother, that's all up to you. Uh, Jordan Kenny, what's the busiest state in the USA for industrial plumbing sick of the cold in Ireland? Well, brother, I got to tell you, it gets cold over here. Uh, if you do come over here, don't go up north, come down south. Uh, Texas, Florida, Southern California, Phoenix, Arizona. Man, there's a lot of warm places over here in the United States. Uh, but there's some cold ones too. You can go up to Green Bay. You know, if you're a Packers fan, I am sorry for you. Uh, it's just way too cold up there. Here's my thing. Look for where you're going to be happy. You can find the industrial job. If you're a good plumber, if you're good at what you do, man, you're going to find a job. And it's funny because people tell me all the time, they said, look, I, I hate the idea of getting into the union because, you know, they're not going to let you work very much. And, you know, I've been in the union for 23 years. And, and literally, the only time I really hadn't worked is when I didn't want to work. It's when I got out of the union. It's when I said, hey, look, I'm leaving to do something else. Or if I knew that I was leaving one job and starting another one, I would plan on starting it a week later. That way I could take off for a week. I could relax. I could clear my head. I could get all my thoughts together and know when I walked in, man, I'm ready to go. So, you know, it's really up to you. Uh, industrial, man, that there's, I mean, Las Vegas is booming. It's not really industrial. It's more hotels, casinos, stuff like that. Uh, I know New Orleans is, is, man, last time I checked, they were building hospitals. Uh, if you want to get cold over here, you can go up to Boston. I think they're doing a bunch of gas work. Uh, what I would say is South Texas would probably be good for the refineries. We've got a, a lot of oil refineries down there. Uh, man, California's always got stuff going on. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of choices here. And if any of y'all know where... There's a lot of things going on in the industrial wise that where he could get a job, man, give him an idea may help. Uh, so let me see, Dustin, I will see you later, brother. Uh, Danford university college is so much pressure now. And, and you know what it, it is, but if you go back and listen to people like Mike Rowe and Mr. Wonderful, look, colleges, everybody was telling everybody, look, you had to go to college to get, a good job. And we started enforcing that so hard and instilling it so roughly that all our children, I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm married to a, a lady that used to be a teacher and everybody was telling everybody, look, you have to go to college to make something happen with your life. And, you know, I've got friends that are plumbers that are millionaires. So it's like, look, you don't necessarily have to go to college. What do you want to do? 
and, and and it can literally be up to you. That's your decision to make. Uh, and and you're right. You get in college now. Now it's not only to go to college. Now you have to do really really good in it. So it can get kind of crazy. Uh so let me see. They got plumbers in the army. Absolutely. Uh, Mike Hadfield. That, that they got plumbers everywhere. And I actually had a Marine working for me that we were actually able to reach back to his military and get him credit for plumbing and and construction that he did. And that helped him get his journeyman license quicker. So, you know, you can go into, you can go in the, the Marines, army, Navy, air force, whatever, and be a plumber. They're, they're building. And I say that air force may not be building any plumbing, but you know, they, they build a lot of barracks. They, they build a lot of remote, locations that you know they need working plumbing and when you come back here and i love the fact that texas will man texas will work with you and try to help you so it really is a good deal uh victor jimenez best date for union plumbers <clears throat> you know if if i were already a union plumber trying to find a job i would probably reach out to california or new york because of how much they pay now i don't know who's got the most work right now but I would say if you're a union plumber, you can probably talk to your business agent or business manager, contact the different locals and find out, hey, who's got stuff going on and and see what the deal is, see what you can do to possibly get in there and get a job. And, but then again, you got to ask yourself, do you want to do commercial? Do you want to do service? You want to do residential? You want to do construction? What is it you want to do? And then possibly talk to the locals and find out who does that. Here in Dallas, I am the only union service contractor. Now, they're here in Texas, but I'm the only one up here in Dallas. So there's different ways to look at it and different things to figure out. But once you figure it out, man, it can be good for you. So, Mark Brothers, you just did a level online in 12. It was crazy. You're writing your... Provincial exam Wednesday. Now, I don't know what a level online in 12 is, but and anytime you're writing an exam, yeah, you're, you're doing a lot of work, I promise. Hector Sanchez. Hi, Roger. You're a master plumber from Puerto Rico. You love doing plumbing every day. Man, congratulations to you. How, how's the licensing in Puerto Rico? And I ask this for a reason. Uh just always curious what it's like in other places. Uh, I would, man, would love to go to Puerto Rico, uh, go down there and visit and, and just see what the world is like. Uh, went to Costa Rica last year and it was phenomenal. Loved it. So anyway, I always love finding out what's the licensing like, how hard is it to be a plumber? And you say you're a master plumber, so I'm assuming you either got a license or you've been doing it for a certain amount of time or something like that. How do they determine uh, that you are a master plumber, not a journeyman or anything like that? And look there, dudes. We just hit 24,000 here recently. So, man, that's pretty cool. I'm all excited about that. Uh, And I hadn't been able to look at that all day. I've been running like crazy. Cooper, you're from Australia. You start work in an hour. Yeah, y'all's time period and our time period is a little bit different. Uh, Cooper, are you familiar with like the Tiger Fish saw blades, the inside blades? Uh, and are you familiar with the Facebook page? I think it's uh, got the craziest plumbing pictures or, or wackiest plumbing pictures, something like that. Uh, I'm connected with Fraser over there, a great guy. Uh, man, y- y'all are doing some good things. And I'll tell you what I like about Australia, and I did say you did say Australia, right? Let me check here. Cooper, Australia, yeah. Uh, I'm a member of Green Plumbers USA, or used to be. I've been through all their training, certified, all that. Uh, and I know Green Plumbers started in Australia. So the, the, the Master Plumbers group or whatever it is they are over there started that and put that together. So, and that's pretty cool. Uh, so, Cooper, congratulations to you. <clears throat> Victor, best part of the country to be a plumber. Dallas, Texas, best part of the world to be a plumber. Actually, I think Texas really is a good spot to be a plumber. Uh, And and that's as as long as we keep our licensing in place, we we don't have problems uh, with 
the House of Representatives, the the Senate, the next legislative session. Uh, you know, we've been fighting for it here in Texas. We've been fighting for it for about a year now. <clears throat> Actually, it's probably been over a year. And you know, man, it's just it's not getting any better. Uh, you know, I, I think more homeowners need to know what's going on. I think they need to call their senators and their representatives on the state level. They need to call the governor, and they need to say, hey, look, why do we not have a board set yet for the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners? Why do we have empty seats? And it's just because they're not making the appointments that need to be made. And, and guys, if we're going to keep Texas safe and Texas homeowners safe, we all need to be doing things together. We all need to be working together and communicating together and doing the right thing that way we can get this thing fixed and get it fixed right. So 915 Richie Plummer, would it be a good idea to get your RMP course or should you wait and see what happens with the board? What would happen if we roll over with TDLR? And you know, I got to tell you, uh, I'm very familiar with TDLR. I have actually talked to them and here's, here's the thing that I'll tell you. If you can get your RMP now, get it. Get it, get it registered, get it done, get it locked away. Doesn't cost you that much money. And, and I say that. I, I know the course is, what, $350, $450, somewhere around in there. Uh, I took the course. I get it. It's a great education. It, it's, 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 it's teaching you more about plumbing and the business end of it and how to run the business end of it. And depending on where you go, I mean, the, the course that I took actually had a college instructor come in and teach the economics end of it. And I loved it. I thought it was great. But I will tell you this. I've talked to, to people. I've talked to the executive director of TDLR. And, you know, he, Brian Francis, I mean, y'all seen it. I, I interviewed him. Uh, he is actually, man, he's a good guy. And I really think at the end of the day, he has what's best in mind. And what I mean by that is he is thinking about the people of Texas. He's thinking about the plumbers. He's talking, thinking about the apprentices that are trying to become plumbers. And I really think, and, and I give you my word I do, I really think he's trying to do the best thing. Now, me personally, I still think the Texas State Board of Plumbing Examiners is a good deal for us. I think it's the best deal for us. But I don't think the governor is going to let us stay there. I think he's already made up his mind. I think that senators and representatives across the state have already made up their mind, and, and they're just going to make it happen. It doesn't matter what we voted on because we won the vote. Now they're going to twist the system. And to me, that's what's going to happen. And I hate to say it because that tells you right there, people of Texas, your vote does not count. The governor and the House of Representatives and the Senators are going to do whatever they want to do. And, you know, I know it's not what they want to hear, and I'm sure that I just got my application for the Texas State Board removed from the pile. But, guys, I tell you, plumbing involves politics, and I never knew that until a year ago when I walked in and I'm down there trying to fight for my license, and I realized this is not a fair fight. They are bending the rules to fit what they want to do instead of doing what's best for the people of Texas. And to me, that's a sad thing to do. So, Atene Tremblay. Hey, Roger, today you learned how to measure the right iron pipe size with the thread allowance and stuff like that. Pretty hard since the teacher wasn't too good at explaining it. You know what? And, and some teachers are teachers. Some teachers aren't teachers. Some plumbers are teachers, and some plumbers aren't teachers. And it's funny because, I mean, we're talking about politics right now. Literally, when I was in Austin talking about or talking to the Sunset Advisory Commission about the Texas State Board, one of the representatives in the, the committee asked me, wouldn't it be easy to just let an apprentice go work with a plumber for a year or two and then give them a license? And the bad thing is some people think it's that easy to learn, that you could just spend a year or two and you know everything plumbing. And, guys, it's not true. Now, don't get me wrong, and I had this conversation with, with a lot of y'all in here last week. 
I truthfully think that a plumber, a good plumber, can take an apprentice that wants to learn. And in anywhere from eight to 12 weeks, I could teach that apprentice how to be a pretty good residential service plumber, meaning I can teach him to troubleshoot a water heater. I can teach him to change out tub and shower cartridges. I could teach him drain cleaning. I could teach him yard services, sewer and water both. I could teach him leak detection. I could teach him so many things that makes him an asset to me. Now I want him in a truck. Now I want him out running and earning and making money because now I can pay him more money. And that is how we get ahead. That's how we get past this labor shortage that we have. So anyway, at the end, I hope that helped you. And if I'm not pronouncing your name right, I'm sorry. So Levi Hamley. Levi Hamby just started the plumbing about a month ago. Good for you. Uh, guys, if y'all are in here now, do me a favor. Tell me where you're from. Where are you at? Uh, where are you at? And are you a plumber? Are you an apprentice? Are you thinking about getting into the trades? Are you a movie star and you're, you're in here spying on me to see if I'll be in your next movie? Just do me a favor. Put in here where you're at, where you're from, and what it is you do. So, say Dina Ciela, Sila, you really like your show. You're a plumber. It has been a while. You didn't do, and they hire you for repairing jobs. So you're out doing service plumbing, man. I get it. And I tell you what, I love being a service plumber. Uh, I really do thoroughly enjoy it. Levi Hamby, any tips and tricks to learn when you first start plumbing? Yeah. And, 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 and I talk about it. I've got the UPC study guide, the universal plumbing code. And, and I tell you what, I used to recommend that to people getting ready to take their journeyman or master exam. And then after a while, I started looking at it. And it's like, hey, you know what? If I would had a book like this when I first got into plumbing, when I was an apprentice, back when I was going to the library and just reading books, how to plumb, because I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn faster. Because I realized and I knew if I learn faster, I'm going to make more money. And we talked about this a week or two ago. You bring more value to the company you're working for, you make more money. And that's what it's all about. And I have people send me messages all the time. How do I bring more value? How do I make myself worth more money? And, and that's how right there. Study. Learn the code. Learn that. When a plumber teaches you, hey, I want you to put in that, that drain for that shower, and that drain is, you automatically know, hey, that drain is supposed to be two inch. Yeah, good for you. Show them that you're learning. Show them that you know that adds value to you. Spran, any tips? Those who want to start their first year in plumbing. Man, just what I just said. Number one, I'll tell you this, I've got a ton of videos where I tell people how to get started, how to find that first job, how to get out and look for it, what to look for. And I'm telling you, if you'll go through those videos, and I've got a course in here, and it's a free mini course, where you go through and you find out what kind of plumber you want to be. Is it residential? Is it commercial? Is it service? Is it new construction? Is it union? Is it non-union? And guys, I've done every one of those. I've even done the industrial. So I can tell you there's some great stuff to learn, but find out what kind of plumber you want to be first. That will really help you. Say, so Dana Silla, you did it more than 10 years. Man, here's the deal about plumbing. It's like riding a bicycle. You're not going to forget a lot. Now, the tools, the materials may change a little bit, and you can learn that. God, right here on YouTube, you can learn almost all of it. But 10 years, that's not a too terribly long time to be out of anything. You can figure it out. If you knew what you were doing when you got out, you're going to know what you were doing, know what you're doing now. Ben Weaver, how are you? It is good to have you in here. You launched three physical products and made decent income, but found no satisfaction. Mike Rowe inspired you to return to plumbing with a different mindset at 38 compared to when you did in your early 20s. And, you know, Ben, I'm, I'm glad you put it in here like that because that is a great way to look at it. And people ask me all the time why I started my company five years ago. 
And look, I tried starting up a company a long time ago, a long time ago when I was in my early 20s. And man, I did things wrong. I literally, I went and made whatever money I needed to make to live that day or live that day and the next. And I wasn't smart. I didn't know how to budget. I didn't know how to advertise. I didn't know how to market. And I didn't want to learn. I knew, hey, look, I'm making a pretty good living. Man, I can work one or two hours a day and I'm fine. And it was really sad, but that's the way I was when I was 20. And it took me a little while to, to grow out of that. And once I grew out of it, I actually started, I, I tried to open a company again probably 20 years ago. And it was like, you know what, this just, it, 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 was, it was more than I had time for because I had a full-time job and I was still trying to do this in the evenings and on the weekends. And I was just wearing myself out. Now I'm really wearing myself out. <laughs> now I'm running a plumbing company and, and spending my life in front of a camera. But I think that I've got an opportunity to help people. So when I started my company five years ago, I was dedicated. I was focused. I walked out of a full-time job where I was director of operations for a large mechanical contractor. I walked out and said, I'm going to do this. And I'll tell you what, I've done it. I've worked hard, I've studied, I've learned, I figured out what I didn't know and I tried to learn it. And the harder I work, the more I learn, the more I know I need to learn. And man, I'm loving it because I love the education. I love the challenge. Will, will you come shut the door? Uh, I, I understand what we're doing, what we need to do, but I also understand where I need to grow and how I need to grow. Uh, there you go. Thank you, ma'am. So, you know, I understand, Ben, wait until later, maybe the smartest thing you've done. Aaron R., how does the traffic affect your plumbing business? Is traffic bad in Dallas? The answer is absolutely freaking lutely And does it affect your business? Every day. And I don't know if you know about how to, how to figure your hours, your workable hours, your billable hours and all that, but we've got to figure about... 50% of our day is drive time. So you've only, you've got to look at, because, you know, we cover a large area. Now we don't cover an entire Dallas, but our service area is literally from downtown Dallas to McKinney from Rockwall to, to Frisco or Little Elm. And that's a big area. And matter of fact, it's a really big area. And the problem with it is it's kind of hard to get guys all around that area. Should I focus down and tighten up and say, hey, we're only going to do, you know, Richardson? Probably so. But I've been doing this for five years, and now I've got customers in those areas that I feel that I still need to take care of because they they called me and used me when I was first starting out. So now i got to look at what can I do to help them. So tell me, what, what do y'all think about this banner across the bottom? This is something different. Uh, I told y'all we're doing things different and we're changing. We're trying to improve. We're, we're actually going through and a stream deck. I've, I've, I've got stream deck down here where I can just push buttons and make things happen. And there's a lot of cool things going on, and we are literally having fun learning. And, and guys, it doesn't matter to me whether it's plumbing or social media or what it is you're doing. I love to learn. And as I learn and I grow, I learn to tie it all together and and I'm just having fun. Anyway, if you like that, let me know. If you don't, tell me, Roger, don't ever do that again. I'm probably still going to do it, but at least you get, can say that. Uh, so, yes, traffic is horrible. Uh, Scott Payne, how are you? Uh, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate that. We're located just northeast of Dallas, Texas. I am actually in Richardson. Uh, Dallas is part of our service area. I, I saw you've been in here for a minute. Uh, Dallas is part of my service area. I grew up even further northeast than here. I grew up in Garland. Uh, I've been plumbing, for those of y'all that don't know, I've been plumbing for about 40 years. I got in plumbing in 1980. And I know that makes me freaking old. And yes, I was young when I got in it. I had quit high school, got into plumbing. You know, as much as I love plumbing, I decided I wanted to go back and graduate. And luckily, I was far enough ahead when I did quit that I was still able to go back and graduate with my class. And it was hard. I had to take some night courses to get caught up, but I was still able to graduate with my class. If I, if I hadn't have been able to do that, I probably wouldn't have gone back. So something worth thinking about. 
But being from the Dallas area, Scott, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, uh-oh, I didn't see him, but it looks like the Urban Explorer is in the house. Neil, how are you? Uh, Josephine the Third. any tips on what to say dealing with objections? Absolutely. Especially with people from Asian and Indian descent, always complaining about the price being too high and almost always trying to haggle. So Joseph the Third, and I think I said Josephine a while ago. Joseph the Third. Number one, I always try to sell the value before I sell the price. Let them understand why, what we're having to do. Why is it valuable? Why is it important? And, you know, there's a lot of different groups that, that you can get in. Uh, if Let me know if you've got your own company. And, and I know I hadn't scrolled all the way down here, but let me know if you've got your own company and, and this is something you're interested in because I'm involved in groups that teach things like this, teaches things like this, and I love it. Uh, I love it. But I also know different people do it different ways. I had somebody come in the other day that said, look, I understand that certain clientele of mine are going to want a discount. He said, so I automatically mark it up 10%. And then I'll go in, I'll talk to them, and I'll give them the price. They're like, ooh, no, too high. You, you, you have to come down. And he says, look, you know, they do that. And I'm like, yo, man, I really can't. I really can't. And let them say it one more time. He says, you know what, look, you let me do this job today, I'll give you 10% off. And they say, okay. It's a win-win situation. You got the job, they got their discount, they feel happy. Now, I was always afraid to do that because I thought, man, if I tell them a price and I told somebody else lower and I come back and get in trouble, I don't want that to happen. But he says, look, I just, I understand my customers and I know how to do it and it works. So man, the best thing I'll tell you is learn how to sell the value. Learn how to sell the value up front. And when they want it cheaper, you just say, look, if, if I'm going to do this cheaper, I got to figure out what do you not want me to do right? What do you want me to scrimp on? What do you want me to leave out? And, and there's always a way to sell the value and, and let them see what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. And, and that can be really, really big. Uh, Mark Brothers, there's little work where you're from for plumbers. It's a struggle to find work. So, Mark, tell me this. Where are you from and I'm just going to kind of look down, and I don't see you down there yet. Uh, okay, now, Neil, if you're serious, I'm going to poop my britches. Uh, Will, if you're still in there, come come in here and holler at me, because uh, I, th I think this is crazy. Uh, Neil, if there is, you're, you're, a, you're a moderator. If there is, put a link in, there, in here to it, because I have not seen it, have not heard of it. And you're literally the first that said anything at all about that. But that's cool because, guys, if y'all don't know, uh, number one, Neil, the Urban Explorer, is a fantastic guy. Got to meet him out in Los Angeles at a great video marketing conference last October. And one of the keynote speakers was Peter McKinnon. And he says that he just saw me in one of the latest Peter McKinnon videos. So, Neil, if you're joking, it's ain't very funny. If you're serious, I want to see a link. And thank you, brother. I love it. Uh, man, there's some cool things going on too, Neil. I need to talk to you about because I got asked to speak at an amazing social media marketing event. They want me to come out and teach people to do what I do. So I'm really excited about it. Neil, I will tell you all about it. Uh, so let me go back up here. Uh, Mark, tell me where you're at, brother. And, and you may have it down below. And if so, I'll get to it. Uh but guys, I'll tell you what, we are short people in the trades across the country. So if you can't find a job where you're at, move, get out of there. And, and if you say, well, look, I've, I've got a family and I, I got kids and, and all this, man, do you want to have a family and kids and not have a job where you can afford them? Or do, would you rather pack and move and bring them with you and say, look, we can have a better life here. And guys, that's a question for you. It's not for me to answer, but I will tell you this. We're looking for plumbers nationwide. And, and I can almost help you get a job nationwide because I know a lot of these plumbers. Uh, the Pipe Ranch, service and repair plumber in Los Angeles, California. Man, I love that. Love your name. 
Uh, as you see, I got a bigger tool than you do. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, I, I've <laughs> look. I love my power branch. Uh, your name's cool though. That is pretty cool. I like that. So service and repair plumber in Los Angeles. How long have you been working for? And, and the reason I ask is I actually went out to LA, actually to Burbank a couple of weeks ago to talk to a big plumbing company out there that's doing, I think some pretty cool things. Don't get me wrong. They're focused a lot on sales. Uh, but I know that they are also trying to train their employees to do things right. And I think they've got a good value system. So I really did like what I heard uh, and actually kind of been talking with them about starting up things like they're doing maybe here in Dallas, Texas. So it could be pretty cool. Uh, let me see. Scott Payne got deleted again. Scott, be nice. I don't know what the Urban Explorer is deleting you for, but, man, he, he's straight up legit. Derek Fox, what's the purpose on the backflow on a toilet? I'm redoing my plumbing and wondering if I need it. Backflow on a toilet. And I don't know that I've seen a backflow device on a toilet. Uh, not here. So you're going to have to explain that one to me. I'm not sure. Isaiah 92 is in the house. Good to see you in here. What kind of blade did you cut that brick with in your video earlier? See, man, everybody wants my tips and tricks. Here's the deal. We didn't cut the brick. We cut the mortar. And I did it with a metal blade because I, I didn't want it grabbing really hard. Uh, it was a new metal blade. And actually, the first one wasn't. I mean, I wore one blade down to where it was smooth. You could literally just rub how smooth it was on your hand. Uh, and get the blade in. Lay your saw at an angle. Get it down in there where you've got as much angle as you can. That way you're not just jabbing at it. And, brother, it works, as you saw. That's cool. I love when y'all ask me questions like that. Uh, my keep up. Jason G, how do I get in the Master Networks? I'm trying to sign up online, but at the bottom of the page, it asks for chapter information. Can't get past it. Jason G, tell me where you're located, and I will help you, uh, or I will help you get in touch with the right person. Uh, reach out to me. Contact me. Uh, I will make sure that I can get that for you. Thank you so much. Okay, Urban, Neil, oh man, I'm serious. I want to see that. Uh, Etienne Tremblay, Quebec, Canada, doing the 1,800 hours in plumbing heating course to become an apprentice. I love that. You know, and Etienne, I'd, I'd like to talk to you too. I've reached out to the Prime Minister of Canada to say, hey, look, because I know they're trying to recruit into the trades, and I've got a lot of Canadians that come in here and watch and, and watch my videos and ask me questions and things like that. So to me, it's really, really neat that they did that, and I want to help. And they ask me all the time, like, how do I get into plumbing in Canada? And to be honest, man, I don't know. Uh, I tell them what I would do here. But you're talking about going to school for 1,800 hours to become an apprentice. My question is, you know, how do they get into that? And is that the only way to go? Because, man, I love helping people. And that's why I'd reached out to the prime minister. You know, who else? Ben Weaver in Fort Myers, soon to be apprentice in Fort Lauderdale. Good for you. So you went over there, Ben. And I believe that you went through your interview or you already got accepted. I, I remember chatting. So that's cool. Isaiah, seven-year residential service plumber in the Inland Empire in Southern California. Cool deal. Well, the company that I was talking about was actually uh, based in L.A., <clears throat> uh, L.A., Burbank, out around in that area. And we actually went up to an office, and I'm trying to remember where it was, but, man, I knew right where I was when I got there. Oh, it was uh, over in Anaheim because it was right by Disney. Uh, actually when we got there, I'm like, man, we can go to a restaurant right around there. He's like, dude, you're from Texas. Like, yeah, but I know where good restaurants are. <clears throat> it's the way we are. Jason G Houston, Texas. I love it. Uh, man, we, we're, we're a lot alike. I've got all three of the master endorsements plus the RMP plus I'm a lead AP. So bam. Uh, Jason, do you have your own company? Because I'm actually going to be in Houston tomorrow and that's what, a, a lot of that stuff is all about. So I'm assuming you do if you're wanting to get into Master Networks. Uh, 
tomorrow night I'm going to be at the Ritz. No, I'm not. Tomorrow night I'm going to be at the St. Regis in Houston for the Houston Young Professionals. Great networking group. Uh, Julie and I will both be there. And I'll tell you what, come by, say hi. We'll talk to you, tell you about Master Networks, and see what we can do to help you out. Uh, and actually, if you want to email me, roger at txgpc.com, uh, I can make sure Julie gets in touch with you, put your contact information. And, <laughs> wow, I, I guess I really am in there. Neil, and I didn't doubt you. Don't get me wrong, brother. Uh, that's pretty cool, though. Guys, anytime Peter McKinnon puts you in a video, God, I hope it's for doing something right, not something stupid. But, you know, with me, you never know. Uh, okay, so, Hector, thank you so much. Uh, there is three licenses, which are apprentice, journeyman, and there's the master. After four years as a journeyman, you could take the exam for master's. Fantastic. And in Puerto Rico. Good, I love that. Uh, now, Hector, I got a question, and you may know, you may not know. Do y'all have any reciprocity? Meaning, if I wanted to move to Puerto Rico tomorrow, like if my wife kicks me out of the house or puts me in a doghouse or something, if I wanted to move to Puerto Rico, would my license transfer down there, or how hard would it be for me to get a license? And I mean, I know that's not going to happen, but man, you never know. You ask the question. I know that you could probably still come to Texas and get a license but you're still going to have to take a test depending on what y'all's test and stuff is set up like. So that's kind of curious. Let me see. Spran from Vegas and work at the Home Depot. Want to learn the trade and hopefully stay. Uh, Spran, I was actually in Vegas a week ago. Uh, actually, yeah, a week ago today. I was, I was waiting to get on a plane. I uh, actually spent a lot of time at the airport. But, uh, yeah, I went out to KBiz. We did a video about that earlier. So the Kitchen and Bath Industry Show, the International Builder Show. Uh, had a blast. I, I, I love Vegas. Got to eat at the steakhouse at Circus Circus, which is where I stayed. Uh, the steakhouse there is really, really good. But, you know, Home Depot's great. And let me tell you why. Because one of my apprentices worked in the plumbing in Home Depot, so he understood all the parts. And, man, that is an education right there. And I think that's a great education. Uh, being able to know what the parts are, know what the materials are, how they join. I mean, the things that he knew walking in really did help him a lot. And, and man, it really did help me. So, Spran, congratulations, man. Uh, and here's the deal. And I, and I like the way you put that. You, you want to learn the, learn the trade and hopefully stay. And I tell people, to me, plumbing is, is more than a trade. It's a career. It's a profession. This is something to be so prideful about. And, I mean, I, I know the ones of y'all that watch my videos and listen to me and hear me talk. It's crazy. Uh, I care about what we do. I love what we do. And it's just, it's cool. But I look at it as a career. And when you say, you know, you're, you're wanting to get in and hopefully say, man, you come in saying, look, this is what I'm going to do for my life. And think about in the very beginning where you want to be when you end up. Because to me, that's what's going to set you apart. When you walk in and say, look, I know I want to own my own company one day. I want to work for me. I don't want to work for anybody else. I don't want some wop up there telling me what to do every day. That's when you come in with an attitude to stay. That's when you come in and you say, look, I got this. Whatever it takes every single day, you study it, you learn it, and you get better at it than anybody else, that will make you come in and want to exceed. And I promise you, you'll do well. Sorry, guys, get on a rant every now and then, but, you know, it is what it is. Salatidi, you're a new plumber. How much is a salary for me in the USA? Well, it depends on where you go. depends on what kind of plumbing you do. Uh, if you're new to plumbing, uh, and I, I hear of apprentices starting anywhere from $10 to $20 an hour across the United States, depending on where you're at, where you're going in, and, and what you know. So there, there's a lot of different things to look at there. Jordan Galk, Galk or Galky, I'll call you Galky. Uh, Roger, love your channel. What's the best way to approach a company for an apprenticeship? 
Call them, go to the main office, or find local plumbers on site. Thanks in advance. Uh, Jordan, tell me where you're located. Uh, and, and I had somebody, man, bust my ball about a, a video we did the other day about getting into the trades. And, and they got upset because I did not tell them step-by-step step how to get in the trades. They said this was more like how to get through an interview. And getting through the interview, guys, to me is a very important part of getting that first plumbing job that you want. But, you know, I talk all the time about how to get that job. And first of all is, is take the little mini course that I do and just figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. What kind of plumber do you want to be? Do you want to be residential or commercial? Do you want to do service or new construction? Do you want to do union or non-union? And guys, that's up to you. I've done all of them. So I give you the goods and bads about all of them just to kind of let you know. But, Find out what kind of plumber you want to be first, then do research, find, then find out what company you want to go to work for, not just the first one that'll hire you. And, and then you do research and find out how to get in touch with that company, the people at that company, and, and get in there and really do good things. And man, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Uh, I don't know that I'd try to find local plumbers unless you already know one. And if you know a, pl a plumber that works for the company you want to go to work for and you go tell him that you're interested in going to work there, that may be different because a lot of times companies will have incentives to employees. Hey, if you help me bring in a, a good apprentice that lasts a year, we'll give you $1,000. Uh, or you bring in a journeyman that lasts a year, we'll give you $5,000. You know, whatever incentive it is that may make it worth it to go find an employee that works for and say, hey, I got a question. Number one, do you like working for that company? And here's why I want to know. I may be interested in a job. So that, that can be really pretty cool. Salatiti, someone tell me 40 bucks an hour. I'm sorry. It's not where you're going to start out at. But you could end out much higher than that too. Will Rosebrock, Neil, I just noticed Roger is in Peter's prize possession photo in his latest video. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm going to have to check it out. Yes, I am in Texas, if you can't tell. Mr. Dustin DeWeese from Rockwall, Texas. And guys, I'll tell you what, I, I meet plumbers a lot around here. And, and Dustin is one that when I met him, I was very impressed. Very polite young man, but he loves plumbing. And you know that, that's what I was talking about a while ago is Man, this is a trade that gets a lot of people into it. But a lot of us see it as a profession, as a career, as a life. And, man, it's just it's cool to see people like that, uh, a young man that gets in and loves it as much as he does. And that's what it takes to do really, really well at this, y'all. Juice Box, how old were you when you first became a plumbing apprentice? 16 years old crazy but it's 16 years old okay so crazy days in victor jimenez looks clean looks cool what, what are we talking about are we talking about the picture from where'd it go i know it's up there somewhere anyway peter mckinnon's got me in a picture somewhere supposedly and guys peter mckinnon is like a youtube god and, and you know I, I i i use that word very sparingly but I'm telling you, this guy is phenomenal. Cameras, photography, what he's done on this, this platform, the guy is, I mean, he is phenomenal. And, and he makes bank. I mean, like bank times bank. And to him, though, it's not about the money. It's like, look, I do what I want to do. And, you know, I have people come in here all the time and tell me, oh, Roger, on your plumbing videos, you should do this. And they're like, well, Roger, if you would sell product, your sponsor wall would be full. It's like, look, I don't want to sell product. If I bring people in with product, I want them to tell you about the product and why they made the product. What are the problems with the product? What can plumbers do better to make that product last longer? Man, that's what I want. Because to me, that helps all of us. I'm still a plumber, guys, so it helps me because I get to learn more about the product. It helps y'all because y'all get to learn about benefits or problems. And, and guys, look, I ask those questions that don't bother me, but that's what I like about Peter McKinney. He's like, look, I, I do what I want to do. And when I tell y'all stories about me plumbing, man, it's straight up legit. I mean, I'm a plumber. 
when I climb under a house and do that, guys, that's me. I, I know y'all think I've got a body double, but I don't. Uh, I mean, my body's almost double what it should be, but it is what it is. But man, I have fun and I love plumbing and it makes it neat. So back to, I'm going to have to go see this. Neil, did you put a link in there, brother? If not, I'm going to have to go find it. Or Will, if you can, uh, if you can put a link to that picture in there, I'd love to see it. Uh, crazy days. What's the best way to get into plumbing? Man, I just kind of went through that and, and it's so true. Number one, it, go watch my mini course. It, it finds out what kind of, it doesn't find out. It helps you find out what kind of plumber you want to be. And to me, that's the best part because guys, uh, man, when I got in plumbing, number one, I made four seventy five an hour and man, I was sporting it. I made four seventy five an hour and oh God, I just wanted to be a plumber. I, I didn't know there were different kind of plumbers. I just knew that my best friend growing up, his dad and his three older brothers were all plumbers and they all made a good living. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a good living. Really, I wanted to make money to, to buy beer for the girls when I went out dancing on Friday and Saturday night. Okay, so that's me being honest. But the cool thing about it is it worked. Uh, I'm still able to buy beer every now and then if I want to. I just don't go dancing anymore. Unless it's with my wife, and then I make her buy. But, guys, to get into plumbing, take the mini course, find out what kind of plumber you want to be. When I got in plumbing, I literally had no idea there was anything other than just being a plumber. I didn't understand residential and commercial. I didn't understand new construction and service. I didn't understand union and non-union. Didn't even know about it. So, guys, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Neil, are you going live tonight? Just asking uh, so, so I can kind of let people know in case they want to jump over and check you and your van out. Uh find out where did I go right here there we go uh fantastic I like that uh he tweeted me the picture I love it Isaiah 92 you're more than welcome man uh here we go here we go here we go gnarly Carl I've seen him okay man I'm, I'm there we'll we'll put the link in there we go fantastic uh Man, somehow I dropped down and it took me way down there. All right. Missed last week. No, you, you ain't never got to pro- apologize to me for missing, brother. You are good. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, Will just showed you the picture at the Urban Explorer. Picture is really cool. And seeing Roger on the front row is amazing. Okay, so he took a picture. He had a picture while I was there, so I know where it's at now. Uh, I'm telling y'all, man, look, I learned so much at these conferences. I love it. That's funny. Uh, Jacob Anderson, hello, Mr. Wakefield. Really need your help. Have a job interview for an apprentice position this Friday. Uh, what clothing attire would you recommend for the interview? And, Jacob, here, here's the thing I'll tell you, and this is a great question, guys. Look like a plumber. And what I mean by that is, you know, wear nice jeans in, wear clean work boots in, uh, wear a belt, tuck your shirt in. And it can be a a button down. It can be a polo shirt, but going clean. Don't wear a baseball cap in. Uh, Don't carry your phone in. If you carry it, turn it off and put it in your pocket or put it in your clip, whatever it is. But don't go in with it in your hand. They think you're waiting on a call. Uh, and, Jacob, this is really a good question. I, I do appreciate you asking this. Because a job interview is not just for them to f- learn about you. This is your opportunity to ask them, what is their company going to do for you? And the things that I'll tell you, and, and, and Jacob, I, I – Man, I get it. It's it's an uncomfortable feeling walking in. And I don't know if you have any experience or anything at all like that. But dress like the position you want. Meaning, look, you're, you're not going in to apply for the owner, so you don't have to wear a suit and tie. You don't have to wear slacks. But you want to dress to impress. 
and, and me and I, I mean, I know y'all can't see me, but I've got on starch jeans and, and I wear starch jeans almost every day of my life. Uh, my, my shirt is starched. Uh, it's clean. I think I've probably had on four shirts today. A uh, couple for videos and one to get under a house and my normal work shirt to wear in. So dress like the plumber you want to be. And here's why. If, if a guy comes in here and applies for a job and he's dressed nice, he's got on a nice polo shirt, he's got on nice jeans, he's got work boots on, he's got them tucked in, he's clean, he smells good, his breath smells good, he doesn't smell like cigarettes or weed or, or alcohol or anything at all like that, I can picture that's how he's going to be in front of my customers, in front of our customers. And that's what I want is I want somebody to look professional. And if he takes time or you take time to present that image when you go in for a job interview, chances are you can present that image every day. And when I see people that come in here, and guys, I've had them come in here in holy tennis shoes, no socks, ragged shorts, uh, a, a, a wrinkly shirt. looks like they pulled it out from under a cushion on their couch and it had been there for a year. And they walk in and you're just like, oh, my God, what is that smell? And guys, I'm thinking that's not what I want to put in front of my customers. I want to send out because, look, I tell people all the time, we are not the cheapest plumbing company in town. I never wanted to be. So when I send someone out to a house to do a job, I want them to look professional. And when you walk in that interview, if you look professional, I can see you working at my company. I can see you going out and helping us take care of our customers. And I love that. So, Jacob, thank you very much. That really is a, a good question. Uh, okay, so let me see. In Lighted Hobo, is there any way to break a tension slab without any issues? Yes. In Lighted Hobo, th there, there's a couple of different ways. You can actually call companies that do ND, NDT, non-destructive testing. They can come in and x-ray it. I want to say it's about five or 600 bucks. I think I charge 975 because by the time I spend an hour talking to them, making sure it's the right deal, yada, 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 it, it takes time and, and it's a process to go through. Uh, but there's that or talk to, you know, the guys that do my work, they don't test. They don't x-ray all the time. They'll go in and start chipping at an angle and, and getting co the concrete to splinter up until they can see it. The other thing that I do is I go outside to the slab to see if I can see the pull holes. And if I can, I can measure them out, and then I can go inside and get really close to laying it out and at least know how far apart it is. So normally I can put them in an area where I don't have to worry about it. Very good question. I like that. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Urban Explorer, we all seen it. Yeah, they're going to show it to me, Neil, I promise. Dave Gorris, how are you, brother? It is good to have you in here on a live. Uh, Dave, man, I love this because Dave asks questions and, and comments back and, and comments with, with other people. Uh, guys, our channels are all about engagement and teaching and educating and, and helping each other. And I love that. I love that you're in here, Dave. Thank you so much. Plumbing is a great business. You've had your own business since 75 and still going. Grandfather started it in 27, and your sons own it now, New Jersey and New York. Man, that is fantastic, and, and I love that. That it, it is. It's the kind of business that you, you can pass on. You can hire your, your buyer or hire your next general manager. And I've tried talking, I've got two granddaughters. Uh, my son is in the union. He is an estimator. He's behind a computer all day and he loves what he does. Uh, my, my stepson is, is running the marketing end of this and, and is doing a phenomenal job on it. He does not want to be a plumber, do you, Will? Uh, so, you know, the neat thing about it is, and, and I love that, Dave, that, that your son Owns it and runs it. And, and man, I think that is fantastic. I hope that one day my granddaughters come in and say, say, hey, Papa, look, we decided we want to be plumbers because I know some amazing females in this industry. And both these girls are, are that kind of 
that they're gonna be something really cool. You can just see it in them, uh, especially Mandy, my my redhead. Man, she is a ball of fire. And man, if this was something they would want to get into, that would make me excited. So, Dave, I think that is fantastic. Uh, Jim Brandt is in the house again. Hello, good to see you. Elevated one, man, I got a lot of good people in here today. Are the inspectors in Dallas picky about insulating techniques? Uh, can you fail an inspection for not cutting insulation at a 45 degree cut? You know, you probably can, but it's going to have to be really poor job. Uh, they, yeah, the, I mean, when you have to inspect, I mean, insulate, you have to, and you have to do it right. Uh, normally the inspectors come out on my job. So before the insulation, because they want to see the, the copper, they want to see the solder joints. They want to see how we put it together. Is it holding? Are there any leaks? Anything at all like that? So I would say it's possible that you could. Julie, you're right. We are looking for plumbers. If y'all know any residential service plumbers in the Dallas area, guys, have them give me a call. All right. Okay, so I'm in that video at 729. Guys, if you have not gone over there, do go over there and say hello and say, oh my gosh, that is Roger Wakefield on the front row. That would be fantastic. Uh, now that y'all got the link and you know to go to 729, y'all do. Go over to Peter McKinnon's video and go in it and say, oh my gosh, that's Roger Wakefield on the front row. I'd recognize him anywhere. Something like that. That would be funny. Thank you, guys. Mark Brothers, hello again. Wish you were closer. It would be great to work for you, but you're all the way in Corner Brook, Newfoundland, Canada. Okay, but Mark, it is warmer down here, I promise. Elena M., I don't know why you got your message retracted, but or why you retracted it, but you did. Scott Payne, you only need to ask one time. I do try to get to all the questions. There we go. Thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, guys, look, ask me a question. As you can see, I scroll through everything. Uh, as I get closer to the end, I'll start answering them a little bit quicker just to make sure that I get through them. Uh, so absolutely. Neil, thank you for tweeting that out. I appreciate it. And I, I will definitely check that out. Uh, gnarly Carl's a plumbing channel. Dude is legit and does good work. Absolutely. And, and guys, look, I, I, this is not the only plumbing channel out there. There's a lot of good channels out there. Now, some of us have talked about collaborating together. Some of us have talked about not collaborating, collaborating together. Uh, there's, there's a ton of good plumbing channels. I, man, I love them. I watch some of them. Uh, I like seeing what other people are doing. That way I know when I'm delivering good content and when I'm just mailing it in. Luckily, I try not to mail it in, so we're doing very well. Uh, an elevated one, if you're really gnarly Carl, then, then we got a problem. I'm joking. Uh, Scott Payne, there we go. Mike Breezy, first year plumber, had a couple of engineering, a couple of years of engineering, good for you. But you just started as a plumber about seven months ago. Love my videos. Much love from Vegas. Brother, I just left Vegas. So, man, much love to Vegas because I tell you what, I do. I really enjoy it out there. Uh, a lot of fun, some great people. Uh, the, the kitchen and bath industry show and the international building show was amazing. Had a lot of fun. So, Mike Brizzy, thank you so much, man. I hope you love plumbing as much as I do because it is a great profession to be in. <clears throat> Isaiah 92, you are more than welcome, man. That is a good trick. Uh, and, guys, that's the thing is I don't always know, and, and y'all think about it this way, I don't always know what y'all don't know. And that's why when we do things and, and Will and I were talking about this earlier, he's like, look, you know, like cutting out the brick, Roger, we didn't know whether to leave it in there or not. And it's like, look, it's part of the job. So it, it, it's, it's straight up legit. You know, we don't know what people don't know. We know, okay, look, I know how to do this. I've done this a hundred times, but we don't know what you don't know. And I got an email. I say an email. It's it a message on YouTube, dude, busting my, headphones over the video that I made. But then he gave me a list of, of five other videos. He said, you know, if you'd make this video and this video and this video and this video, these would be good. And don't get me wrong. I, I may not make every one of them, but at least when I hear what people are looking for, 
I can do content research and say, hey, you know what? This might really be a good video to make. And the reason is, look, as y'all know, I love plumbing. I love what we're doing, but I don't always know what it is you're looking for. And that's part of this whole YouTube thing is trying to figure it out. And don't get me wrong, I think we're getting pretty good at it. But I have no problem people saying, hey, look, I really like the way you cut that out. Man, I, I wish you'd do a video just showing me the right way to remove a brick or the right way to put it in or the right way this or the right way that. Man, knowledge is power. And the more we can learn, the better plumbers we're going to be. And, and it's going to benefit all of us. Jeff Z, you want to start a career in plumbing? You're in Boston, Massachusetts. I say Boston, maybe not. How should I start? Done security work for almost 10 years of my life, so it's a big shift, but one I think will help my future. And Jeff Z, you're right. And here's the deal. I did security while I was still in the union. And don't get me wrong, I have my plumbing license already, but I went to I went on a hot date one night, and this is before I got married. Went on a hot date to Starplex Amphitheater. And I, Clint Black was playing. And that gives it away. I'm, I'm an old redneck. Love country music. Used to be called Redneck Roger when I was a DJ, so long time ago. But I went to see Clint Black in concert. And this guy is walking up and down the aisle beside me. And I finally hollered at him. I said, dude, how did you get this job? Because I thought, that's a cool job to have. He gets paid to go to concerts all the time. And he told me, so I went down and applied. About three weeks later, I was getting, I, I was getting, I got a job and I was actually hired, which I'm kind of a big guy. I'm a, I call it six foot. It's really about five foot 10. I weigh about 200. It's really about 230, 225. Uh, but I've always been broad shoulders. I've always worked out a lot and, and always been pretty stocky. So I got a job and they put me in the pit and it was really cool because the first show that I got to work, I'll tell you what, it, it was cool because it was on TV last night, Aerosmith. So Steven Tyler and I was there and man, we all met right down in front of the pit and he started sending everybody out the, the supervisor at the time started sending everybody out to positions and I am the last one sitting there. And I normally don't tell personal stories like this, but you know, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I, it's a quick one because we got somebody here doing security, trying to tell him a, a job he can get on the side, have fun. So I am literally, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm the last one. I looked at him. I said, Mark, did you forget about me? He said, no. He said, uh, you're on the second row. And I was like, wait a minute. Oh. There's no security on a second row. You got bottom of the aisles. You got the pit. You got the wings. You got this. Why am I on a second row? And he says, well, when Steven Tyler comes to town, they go to topless bars and they give out 40 tickets because I think there's 43, 43 tickets, the front two rows to topless dancers. They don't want any guys on the front rows at all. So your job is to stand in the middle of the second row, turn around and look at the crowd and don't let anybody on the front two rows. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> That's not a bad gig. So I do it. And about midway through the show, all I hear is the screaming from the stage. Security! Security! And I'm sitting there, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, what's going on behind me? And this little girl next to me reaches up and taps me on the shoulder and says, hey, he's talking to you. And so I'm, I'm watching the crowd, and I turn around and look and Steven Tyler is on stage yelling at me and he's like, Hey, he says, pick her up. And I look at him and I look at her and I look at him and I look at her and I'm like, what? So he says, pick her up. So I look at her and she turns around and shows me her back and she has Steven Tyler's face tattooed on her entire back. I mean, from here all the way down. And she was kind of old, so it's probably wrinkled just about the same amount. I mean, it's perfect. And I looked down, and I was like, okay. So I reached down, and I go to pick her up, and I put my hand down where her butt would be, and there is nothing there. And I pulled my hand back, and she turns. She has cut the entire butt out of her jeans. And anyway, she said, don't worry about it. It's been touched all night long. So I grab her, pick her up. They put it on camera. 
So anyway, back to my story, Jeff, look, while I was plumbing, I was doing concert security at night and I did it for about five or six years. I actually moved up to be a supervisor, the pit supervisor, the guy who had put me in the middle of the second row. When he retired, I took his job and I loved it. If you want to do this job bad enough, you can do it. And I knew when I first started plumbing that I was not going to make enough money to support my wife and son at the time. So I found other jobs and I stayed busy. And I tell you what, I'm so glad I did because I have got the most amazing career and I love what we do. Cool. Urban Explorer just tweeted it. I love it. At the end, there's two ways to get into plumbing here in Quebec. First and best is doing the 1800 hours. Get your diploma, certified apprentice. Second way is when they really need you. Yep. Penny plumbers, they open something, opened a basin, and then you'll go in the field without being trained. All unlearned while working, but take way longer to be recognized as a certified plumber. Fantastic. Victor Jimenez, will plumbers even get paid more than electricians? Yeah, it depends on where you're at and what the needs are. We're in a supply and demand industry. When there's not a lot of plumbers and there's a lot of calls for plumbers, plumbers charge more money. Plumbing companies charge more. That's when they start looking at their books and say, hey, look, we are so busy. We're turning away calls every day. We need to raise our prices. And they do. And plumbers start saying, hey, look, I need more money because I got another plumbing company calling. And they do. And, guys, we're in a good trade right now, a great profession, a great career. Can you make more money than electricians? Sure. Can electricians make more than you? Sure. Put enough effort into training and educating yourself to where you bring value to your company, and you'll always make more than most other people, plumbers or electricians. And you can do that no matter which one you are. Uh, Julie Wakefield, you hope this doesn't go to his head knowing he's part of Peter McKinnon's most prized possession. Hey, you know, Neil, I'm just saying it's a pretty cool gig. You know me better than that, man. I'm having fun. And Lighted Hobo, Roger, do you know any good companies in Phoenix, Arizona? Uh, are you doing service or new construction? Uh, because I do actually know a couple. If you'll reach out to me again, guys, my email address is roger, R-O-G-E-R, -E at txgpc.com. Uh, I don't always get to every story or every message that I can, but I promise you I try. And if it doesn't end up in my junk mail, I will try. Carson Hutchins, how long does the process take to get into the union? Uh, it depends on when you apply. Some unions accept every year. Some accept every two years. Uh, some accept twice a year. I know here at some points in Dallas we've been so busy that they recruited for the school that starts in August. Then they recruited again at the winter break in December and brought in more in January. So, and the, the opportunities are there. You just got to be willing to put in the time to keep trying and, and, and do whatever it takes because it's not easy to get in any of them. But I promise you, it's well worth it. <clears throat> ah. Man, something moved around. Hector, yes, you will have to take the exam either for apprentice or master. Having you back in 90 when you moved from Massachusetts. Good deal. That's good to know. Thank you so much. Ignacio Rosales, how would you just, how would you just plumber California small contractor looking to expand? Mm, not sure. Just a plumber. Sorry. Just a plumber. Uh, you know what? I mean, if you're a small contractor uh, or a plumber wanting to expand, man, start getting out and telling more people about your business. Uh, I think it was Jason earlier that asked about uh, Master Networks down in, in Houston. There's a lot of different ways to grow your, your business. So, man, d do everything you can. It's a... Uh, it's a great business to get in, and you can grow it as big as you want to. Uh, man, somehow I went down and it jumped far. Uh, I will tell you all this. Uh, sl slow down on the questions. Uh, I know it's 
521. I got about 10 more minutes, and then I have to go. I have a hot date tonight with my wife and some friends. So I will be getting out of there. Uh, just a plumber. Everybody explorer. Victor Jimenez, give Roger time. Got it. Thank you. Bad key. That's okay. You are good. Uh, it's an amazing story, Tyler. Good afternoon, Jason Smith. Absolutely. Uh, I know. I, I want to. I probably have my phone right here. I guess I guess I, guess I, I threw it at somebody or something. Uh, let me see. Ethan Grantham. Hey, Roger, what's your mini course? I'm an apprentice now, and I really like new construction rough end. The service is cool, too. You're going to school in February. I mean, it depends on where you're going to school. Is it costing you money? Is it something the, the company you're working for is paying for? Anything like that. I'll tell you what, Neil. Uh, all I can say is thank God I've got the the videographer, the editor that I do. Thank God that I've got Will in there too to help and, and help lead and guide and help control where we're at. So yeah, it's crazy. Uh yeah, isn't that the truth? I'm so worried about my little redhead. Uh service plumber in Houston. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, Jason. Yeah, definitely get in touch with me. We'll talk about Master Networks. I'm headed to Houston probably noonish tomorrow. Like I said, I'll be down at. The St. Regis, uh, man, if you want to come by and visit, you, you'll, I'll be the guy in the mustache, just, just so you know. I carry it with me everywhere I go. Jordan Gawkey, you're from Sydney, Australia, interested in residential maintenance plumbing. We'll be applying for an apprenticeship tomorrow. Good for you. Man, no, hey, I love the 22-year-old apprentices. I love apprentices up to 35, 40. Uh, I think you'll do very well. At 18, you know, like I said a while ago, look, I, I tried starting a company before, and man, it it died. Uh, but it's because I was not doing things right and very good. Uh, I don't know what just happened here, but man, all of a sudden, it just says everybody's gone. I guess when I said no more questions, everybody left. Uh, I'm still going to answer them, though. Lewis Hutley, hello, you're getting plumbing studying in at night in college. So you can learn to see which plumbing works, commercial or domestic, residential. You've really got your plumbing books. I love it. I love it. Uh, Lewis Hutley, man, good for you. I hope it all works out well. Uh, MG, what's up? Good to see you. Hello, fellow Brit. Absolutely, man. I got a lot of people from across the world in here tonight. I love it. Jason Smith, the owner of your company is woman-owned, and she is a redhead. You know what, Jason? Have her come to... Uh, the St. Regis tomorrow night, the Houston Young Professionals is meeting there. Looking forward to it. It should be a great group. Smith, the owner of your company is a woman, 5'6", and 3' foot taller than me. Uh, Matt Lent, third-year apprentice here from Canada. Welcome. Good to see you. Cruz, 1527. Good to see you. Uh, I believe you're coming to town soon. I like that. Uh King of plumbing. Dario Galetti, 17, doing plumbing next year in South Africa. Thoughts about plumbing in South Africa? You know what? I've worked with a plumber who is actually from South Africa. Uh, we actually built the Four Seasons Resort in Austin, Texas, on Lake, I started to say Lake Travis, it's not, on the Colorado River, uh, Town Lake, downtown. Man, he was a great plumber. Loved his attitude. Worked hard, man. He was just a good guy, so that's fantastic. Jeff C, thanks for the insights. Thanks for the story. Sounds like quite the experience. You worked hospitals, so not so full of glory. But Jeff, think about it. If you've got some security background, and there's a venue that does concerts like that, man, it's a great gig, and you can work during the day and do that at night. It's just, man, just giving you a choice and an alternative. It helped me out a lot. Uh, pretty cool. Matt Lent, what do you think about Jamico? Uh, always replace the parts are expensive here in Canada and find them to be junk. You know what? <laughs> That's pretty funny, Junk Co. Uh, man, th there's a lot of good products. There's a lot of bad products. There's just a lot of plumbing products out there that, man, it's tough. Uh, 
some brands that I think are great, you go in and you find a problem with every now and then. I've got a toilet that I loved. It's it's the American store American Standard ActiClean. It's a self cleaning toilet. It cleans itself. Uh, thing is, one of my plumbers hated it. He said, "Hey, it, it leaks," and I never could figure out why his leaked. I've never had a problem. So anyway, it, it just it kind of is what it is. But I tell you, I love mine. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, pleasure to see you in here again. I do appreciate it. I hope that things are going wonderful for you. And John Kramer, new union leaks, new union leaks. I don't understand that, but I'm assuming that means you're new to the union. And, man, if so, welcome. Uh, where are you at? Where are you from? Guys, I've had fun. Uh, I love doing this. I love the fact that I got to go to KBiz and I got to talk to kids about the trades and hopefully help recruit some that, that may want to be plumbers or maybe even not plumbers, maybe electricians or roofers or sheet rockers or HVAC techs or anything at all like that. Uh, union fitting leaks. And then we got mug step. I think it means black iron union is leaking. Aha, there we go. Uh, man, I take, I take my unions apart, clean them up, uh, lubricate them a little bit, put WD-40 on them or something. Make sure they're clean, though. If, the, if you can't get them to hold, replace them. Uh, I never use Teflon tape, pop dope, anything like that on unions, though. So I have got to figure out. I know how. I know what to do. So, guys, uh, it's just a few minutes before 530 Central Standard Time here. <clears throat> We are getting ready to shut this thing down. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming in here. Neil, the Urban Explorer, brother, great to have you in the house. Uh, Julie Wakefield, love you. Great seeing you here as always. Uh, Dustin, man, Dustin DeWeese, it's good to have you in here. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, Will Rosebrock, thank you for all that you do each and every day. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. So anyway, guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.